Welcome to the Deliverance Church programming that comes to you uh, in uh, MBCI uh, at exactly 9.30 every Wednesday and also uh, in Kingdom TV uh, twice, uh, Monday at 8.30 for, to 9 for the regular church program and Saturday evening between 8 and 8.30 for the uh, program uh, on, on, on uh, interaction on, on current issues. We, we bless the Lord for the opportunity we have to be able to come to you. Uh, in the, the New Year series uh, is a special series which is uh, captured in the book of Matthew 6, 10, talking about the kingdom of God coming. May your kingdom come. May, and of course, it goes further, may your will be done. And, and so we're talking about kingdom manifestation. We are talking about divine manifestation. When you talk about the will of God being done in heaven, as is done here, we're talking about uh, the, the purposes of God. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's workmanship created uh, in Christ Jesus for good works. So God is working through us to execute his purpose here. So in this year of kingdom uh, manifestation, we invite you to follow the series and let God use you to glorify his name. And of course, be part of those who will reach out to others to bring them to church. God bless you. Open with me the Bible in the book of Joshua, chapter number one. I'm focusing on verse number five and six of Joshua, chapter one, verse five. Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter number one, and verse five and six. This is what scripture says. There shall not be any man that will be able to stand before thee. In some of the translations it says, to stand against. No man shall be able to stand before you or against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail you. You're moving further. But this is, I will not fail you, nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people you shall divide for an inheritance the land which I saw unto their fathers to give them. Hallelujah. Only be what? Strong and of good courage. Only be strong and of good courage. That thou mayest observe to do according. And I, I, let me not continue. You can continue on your own now. I also want us to look at the book of Romans, chapter number 15. Um, Romans 15. And I will see, there's a bigger passage, but I can't read it all because of time. Let me see what I can capture in that Romans passage. And you can be able to read in your time, verse number 14 all the way to 33 uh, of, the, of, of, of that passage in Romans 15. But uh, we, we, are, we need to appreciate the promise that God has given us. And it is good for you to be, even if some people can tell, say you are a fanatic for the way you believe. And they think that maybe you believe you, you, you are over the board. You'd rather be described to be over the board in your faith. For uh, we've said before that the only way God has chosen to deal with us is in, uh, in a way that we be men and women of what? Of faith. For he that comes to God must believe that God is. And verse 19, and you can read further, verse 19 of Romans chapter 15 says, In mighty signs and wonders, are you with me? In mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit, 
so that from Jerusalem and around about uh, uh, Lilikram, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And I have made it by aim to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, but even that, that it should not build in another man's found, uh, foundation. Hallelujah. So, uh, I mean, welcome you to read all the way to 33, but the critical aspect I want you to understand is that you and I, and we're going to see that, uh, if, if you move to the book of uh, uh, Isaiah 8 and 18, this is something also I want you to capture uh, before I just go to my notes. This is a foundation of the issues that we're going to raise in this service. Uh, and I want us, that passage, if we can be able to read it in concert so that you can internalize what is revealed in that passage of Isaiah 8 and verse 18. What does it say? Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Notice what you are saying. I and the children. We are for what? Signs and wonders. You see, it's very, very important that we can connect to the miraculous. If all that you know is what naturally can happen, then what is your difference? What is the difference between you and them? And those who do not even regard Christ. There's no difference. Because they figure, they start to figure everything out. But we have a God who says, hallelujah, that we are for what? Signs and wonders. And this is a year of kingdom manifestation. And the kingdom of God manifests itself through signs and wonders. Things that are supernatural. Things that are not common. Hallelujah. And therefore, you need to connect to the supernatural. What do you need to do? Connect to the supernatural. And, and I thank God because God has given us evidence of the realities that can be defined. This was not common. This was the finger of God. This was the hand of God that intervened. You know, some of you have gone through battles, uh, you know, for your children or for yourselves. You, you know you are here as a testimony. Banasefewe of what God can do. And I want you to understand, God has promised something that is so significant. And that is the subject we address, that God's presence, God's presence ignites the power within us. It is God's presence that does what? Ignites the power within us. For it is God, the Bible says, who works in us. Ephesians 2.10. For it is God who works in us to will and to do that which pleases him. It is not our idea. It is the working of God. Hallelujah. So today we continue to address the New Year series on divine manifestation. We need to appreciate the fact that God desires to execute his will here on earth regarding each of us as it is in heaven. And that is what is kingdom manifestation. That the will of God, hallelujah, what God has desired about you and about your family and about this church, what God has desired in heaven will manifest here. Hallelujah. Whatever God has desired to see happen in your situation, in the life of your children, and each one of us must be willing to engage in spiritual warfare for that which God has desired for you. Because you won't discover even in the Old Testament and the New Testament that whenever God needed to do something, for some reason, do you know God would just have decided to deal with the enemies and, and clear them and then allow you to come and occupy? But many times he, does not, he didn't do that. What did he do? He told them to fight the enemies. And we know how God went before them. 
The presence of God radically changes our lives and the lives of others. He gives power to both the words that we speak and the actions we choose to take. He makes possible signs and miracles. This is what characterizes the early church. This is what should characterize Deliverance Church Langata today. Hallelujah. Because we are a part of the, of the acts of the apostles. There should never have been anything that broke what the early church was doing from what happens in the church today. Because we are part of what? The book of Acts. The book of Acts. He makes it possible. He makes possible signs and miracles. This is characterized in the early church. Now, as Paul begins to bring his great letter to the Romans to conclusion, he talks about his own personal calling. This highly focused assignment God gave me, this priestly and gospel work of serving the spiritual needs of the non-Jews, outsiders, so that they can be presented as acceptable offering to God, made the whole and holy by God, you know, made whole and holy by God himself through the power of the Spirit. Now, among other things, a priest, hallelujah, and you may need to be reminded, the Bible says we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So who is, have you ever recognized that you are a priest? You know the problem we have had within um, Orthodox Christianity is that we have put a very big boundaries between who is a priest. And so if most people don't consider themselves to be priests. In fact, we have even gone further to dress the priests differently. So that now I'll be preaching with a priestly what? Garment. What that does is that it distinguishes you with me. And so that is why, uh, you know, you would think that the standards you have to keep and the ones I keep are really different. But really, that is not the truth. Because we are held accountable to the same revelation. So, you are a priest. So, among other things, a priest is a person who goes to God on behalf of the people. Of course, it used to happen within the Old Testament account. We, and, and of course, there is a degree in which still my mission and ministry may be a bit distinct, but it only gives me a higher responsibility uh, as a priest. But all of us, in this sense, we are all priests. You are in priestly service whenever you are taking a message from God to the world. What is that? A priestly service. And you tell your neighbor, I am a priest. And I must walk like a priest. Hallelujah. That means you walk distinctly. You walk honorably. Because you are a priest. God, you see, interceding, praying for those outside the church to come to know Christ. As they do so, they become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul's ambition was to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. So that he would not be building on anyone else's foundation. He did this by leading the Gentiles to obey God. He fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. What is our commitment? To proclaim the gospel. Yeah. Na hapa utapata neno limehubiriwa. Bana sifiwe. In this congregation, it is very unlikely that you will find any of the men that will stand here coming with some newspaper clips to read for you here. Are you listening? We read it from where? Text. Hallelujah. If we have to do any reading out there and maybe refer to it because of whatever application we want to bring here, what we bring here is this book. Hallelujah. And this book of the law should never depart from your mouth. The Bible says we shall meditate upon it. How often? Day and night. For it's only then that we shall make our ways successful or prosperous. For then we shall have good success. Tell your neighbor, this is my year of success. Hallelujah. This year you shall not beg. 
Because the heavens are opening. For the will of God will be manifest in your life as it is done in heaven. Hallelujah. You could have begged all the years you have lived, but the, your begging has come to an end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God says that, uh, that uh, life and death is where? Is in the power of the tongue. And, uh, and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. So I'm looking forward to the things that we declare in this place. Because God is going to do mighty and wondrous things in this place. Hallelujah. So among the so many things, we have said his proclamation of the gospel was holistic. Like Jesus, his preaching with words was accompanied by the demonstration of the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. And there are three things I want to talk about in ways of expressing the kingdom of God within the time that we have. In the demonstration of what God desires to do through the power of the gospel, one of the things is words. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, your words have to change. There are things that should never be heard coming from your mouth as becoming a saint. Because what changes your environment is what you declare. The Bible says, with the, with the heart a man believes, and with the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. So you will change your life by changing your words. And one of the greatest things you have to overcome, we live in a society where we hear so many things and the world influences us. Tell your neighbor, I will not be influenced by the world. Come and tell them that you believe it. I'm not going to be a copy cut of the world. Yes. Hallelujah. I will not talk the language of sinners. I am a saint. Hallelujah. I will not talk the language of doubters. I will talk the language of faith. Hallelujah. I will not be influenced by the world. I will influence the world. So God has desired that you create your future by declaring his word. Hallelujah. You change the world by declaring what? If your salvation came because you declared. How many are born again here today? What do we say? With a heart, I believed. And with a mouth, confession was made unto what? Into righteousness. So, I am born again. How did it happen? I declared it. Hallelujah. I confessed it with my mouth and therefore I possessed it. Before you possess anything, you have to declare it. I wish you captured this. I think I don't know whether I don't know whether you're catching what I'm saying. Before you possess anything, you must do, do what? Declare it. You only possess what you declare. The reason that the reason that David was able to bring down Goliath is because he declared it. Hallelujah. And if you see the behavior of David in dealing with Goliath, Hakwa na Bahatisha. He was so persuaded of what God was going to do. And he declared it ahead. And you must be able to address your situations. Come on, you must address your circumstances. Because your circumstances will change because you have changed the way you talk. You are going to declare the word of the Lord. You are going to know what it is to prophesy. And if you are going to withstand your enemies, it will come because you prophesy. You must refuse to be intimidated by the enemy. You must refuse to succumb to, the, to those that continue to tell us to define your, what you can do and cannot do. Come and touch someone and tell them, nobody will remit me. Hallelujah. I will not be limited by the wishes of men and women. I know there is a God in heaven who sets standards for me. Hallelujah. You cannot put boundaries along my way. Because I believe in a God who is so immense that you cannot lock him up. Hallelujah. It is time for us to think outside the box. 
You have been boxed for so long. That is why you have never experienced God in your life. You, can, you have no testimony of a miracle because you live in a box. A box, some religious people put you in. Come out of the box. And do you know that your life is defined by your belief system? Your belief system. And my work here is to change your belief system. That's what I'm committed to. The reason I stand here every Sunday and these men stand here is to change your belief system. Because unless we change your belief system, you will remain the same. I want you to hear me well, but as if you were. Tell your neighbor, listen to the pastor well. Listen with an inner ear. Unless you change your language, you will never change. You will never change. And somebody said something, and if people felt insulted by it, in Yayo Stadium, when we were transiting to the year of Jubilee, somebody said something that was not taken kindly. He said, unless you remove the slum, from the people who live there, you can never remove them from the slums. Okay? So what is the first thing? Remove the slum. Unless you remove a village mentality from people, you can never remove them from the village, even if they lived in Nairobi. The steel carry what? A village mentality. And they live where? In the city. Hallelujah. So, get laid of what? The village mentality. This is Nairobi. Tell your neighbor, this is Nairobi. You must think as a Nairobian. Because God has brought you where? Here. Hallelujah. And if you want to keep the village mentality, go back to the village. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go back where? To the village. Because you will never live as a person that lives in the city as long as you carry the village mentality. Hallelujah. The village mentality is what makes you eat a banana in the car and throw the banana thing outside your, the window of your car. You are still in the village. Hallelujah. It is a village mentality that causes you to walk in the street and spit in the street. <coughs> That's a village mentality. Get out of a village mentality. Praise God. Change your life. Because you never, you know, you don't live in a village anymore. How long is it since you lived in a village? In fact, do you know? You are supposed to begin changing the village. Because you have lived in the city so long and when you go there, you don't change. When you go to the village, you carry the what? The city mentality there. Praise God. Because your language is constant. So, the first thing of demonstrating the kingdom of God is through word. The word. You speak the language of Christ. You speak the language of God. You speak like God. Hallelujah. That's what you do. Because you have a different father and you speak like him. So, I want to submit to you today. 
that the gospel is the most powerful message in the world. Paul had proclaimed the gospel by what I've said in Acts 7 22. And Moses, the Bible says, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Listen to this. That's the book of Acts. And Moses was what? Learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Why not if you were? Tell your neighbor, you need to go to school. Read. You know, there are people here who don't have a reading. Reading what? Kacha. One as if you were. And even when you know you have a pastor who preaches to you who has written, you have never read even his book. Let me tell you, you are influenced by the books you read. That's what influences you. Because you are not made up only about what you eat physically. You are made up for what you eat. What you feed your mind on. Some of you, you read a newspaper and even mark it. But you have not read the Bible. So what is defining you? A newspaper. Yeah? And you do all the crosswords. Tell your neighbor, Mungu and his idea. Lazima ni badirike. Dio ufaume wa Mungu udhirike katika maisha yangu. Now, I've spoken about words and I'm not done. I'm yet to go to the other things that demonstrate the kingdom, which are works and also wonders. But I need to quit. Bana sefiwe. I need to quit. Let's stand up on our feet. I want you to lift up your hand before the Lord. And I want you to declare this. From this day, From this day I, will talk the language of God. I will talk the language of God. I repent, I repent. for being a copycat for the, uh, of the world. Of the world. From this day, my talk, my talk will be influenced by the Holy Spirit. I believe I, believe I can do all things I can do all through, through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. Strengthens With the help of God, With the help of God I'll, scale I'll scale above walls. No mountain will stand before me. No enemy will withstand against me because they are coming down. Those who have been staying at the gates to devise evil against me and against my children, this day I prophesy against them. I prophesy against them. Say like you believe it, anybody who took anything that I, I owned to a witch to put it in their pots today I declare in the name of Jesus those pots are broken in the name of Jesus and nothing desired against me will come to be. I take the battle to the gates. Thank you, dear Lord, for you have said that you will strengthen. You are the strength for those who take the battle to the gate. This is my year of elevation, of manifestation. This year, I am going places in the name of Jesus. Come on, let us celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
beginning.